Welcome to the question and answers segment of the class. As I mentioned in the earlier videos, I've been teaching this course for over 20 years now. And during that time, I've seen a lot of the same questions come up over and over again. Now, I can't take the time to answer every question during class. It's already over four hours long. So I put together this Q&A list of the top questions that I've seen come up over the last 20 years. One thing that I've learned is that people hate when I say, we'll get to that in a future class, which I used to do before I had all these videos recorded, but I've got all these videos recorded now. So all of these questions are answered in other videos. Some are free and some are future classes. And so this will be a list of all the popular questions and where you can find the answers. So if you need an answer to something now, here it is. First question is, I want to make a form that has a list of all of my customers, and I'd like to be able to click on one of those customers to open up their record in the customer form. How can I do this? Well, this is something that we'll cover in Access Beginner Level 7, but I also have two of my free tech help videos, the Continuous Forms video and my Blank Template video that will explain how to do it. So there are the links. I'll put links in the links section down below so you can just go click on them. Here you can see an example of the customer list form from Access Beginner 7. You just click on one of these customers and click on the Open Selected Customer button and it opens up their form. And here it is in the Tech Help Free template. Just click on the Customer List button there. There's the customer list and you can either click on the button, like click on Jean-Luc and then hit the Open Customer button, or I show you how to make a double click event. You go double click and it opens them up that way too. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. When I press the Shift F2 key to open up the Zoom window, it doesn't come up. Now, this happens a lot with laptop users, me included. I use laptops for all my work. And generally, when you get a laptop, the function keys have been remapped, so you have to actually use the function key too. So instead of just going Shift F2, you have to go Shift Function Key F2. I know, that's annoying to me too, but everybody always asks this question, so I figured I'd share it. There is a way that you can remap that, so that the function keys aren't necessary to hit the actual function keys. Um, on a lot of laptops, for example, those function keys will also be like for the, the screen brightness up and down, the volume up and down. All right, you can switch that and each laptop is different. So you have to look in your laptop documentation. Is there a way to zoom in with forms and tables and queries and stuff? Unfortunately, the answer is no. In Access, the only object that lets you zoom in and out is a report. Here, for example, is an invoice report that I built. You can click on it to zoom in, or you can use a little zoom bar down here for reports. But unfortunately for forms and tables and queries, you can't do that. I know in Excel and Word and PowerPoint, you can zoom in and out, but you can't in Access. Unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't give the same love to Access that it gives to those other apps because let's face it, Access isn't as popular. And a lot of people really want that feature to be able to zoom in and out on a form, especially for people that are hard of sight, including myself. Now you can design a bigger form with bigger fonts and bigger text boxes, but you can't do it with just on this one standard this form here or in, in tables. You can't zoom in and out of tables either. So yeah, I know a lot of people ask for that, can't do it. Now you can change the data sheet font size. So in tables, for example, you can go into, let me show you, you can go into file and then options. All right, under data sheet, you can change right here the size of your font. You jack it up to 20 points, for example. Now when you open up any data sheet, you can see everything's much, much bigger. That's an option. However, one of the things that I'm going to teach you is that you generally don't want to poke around in your tables and your queries. You want to work with forms. And that setting doesn't change the font size in forms. Lots of people ask this, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it somewhere in the course. I'm pretty sure. I'm not positive. How do I delete a table? Well, you just right click on it in the navigation pane and hit delete. All right, here's your navigation pane. Let's say you want to get rid of version history T, just right click on it and pick delete right there. Say, so are you sure? Yeah, once it's gone, it's gone, by the way. There's no undo. When you, when you delete something, it's gone. Back up your database. We'll talk about backing up in a few minutes. Here's a popular question. I'm building a database where I already have a student number assigned to each student by the university. Should I still create an auto number as the primary key? I get this question a lot. I've already got customer IDs assigned 
in my old paper system or with Excel. I've already got product IDs that I'm given from the suppliers. Should I keep those numbers? Yes, definitely keep those numbers. Make a field in your table called, in this case, student number, okay, and store that number. But, but you should make an auto number too and have that as your ID field, student ID, for example. There's nothing wrong with having two different fields like that, a student number and a student ID, a product ID and a product code, whatever. Now, we will talk about relationships when we get to the expert series. I'm going to talk a little bit about relationships in the next class, Access Beginner 2. But Access uses those ID fields for making relationships between tables, for relating you know, customers to orders, right? students to classes, that kind of stuff. That's for relationships. Uh, we're going to learn a lot more about relationships as we move forward. Those auto numbers are not for you. They're for Access. You don't even need to worry about what they are. Okay, watch that video there, my auto numbers video. It explains all of this in a lot more detail if you want to learn more about auto numbers. I deleted a couple of customers that are no longer with me. Now there's a gap in my auto numbers. How do I get them back? Again, just like the answer to the last question, don't worry about them. Those auto numbers are not for you. They're for access. So if you delete a customer and he's gone for good, don't worry about that auto number. Okay. It doesn't matter if they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 12, 26, okay? That's for making relationships. Now, there is an exception, okay? If you already have relationships set up in your database, okay? Let's say you've got customers 1, 2, and 3, and you've got orders in the system for customer 2, and you accidentally delete customer 2. Now you got a whole bunch of orders in there missing their customer. So yes, there is a way you can restore that auto number, there's a link right there. Go watch that video if you absolutely need to get that auto number back. It is possible. And while I'm thinking about it, sometimes people just want a counter variable. They want a number that goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and counts up. Orders, for example. You can make unique order numbers for a customer, and each customer has order 1, order 2, order 3, and so on. That's possible. Again, I got another video on that. It's a little more advanced. Requires a tiny bit of programming. But go watch my counter video if you want to learn how to do that. Can I use my access database to send out letters to all of my customers? Absolutely you can. Now you can actually write all of your letters inside of access as a report. I cover that in access expert level five. You can also write the letter in Microsoft Word and then use access as your data source for a mail merge. I cover that in my Microsoft Word 201 class and in my access expert 19 classes. And if you want a quick version, watch my letter writer video. That's a tech help video that does the same thing in a, a quick format. Okay, so yeah, it's definitely possible. It's one of my more popular classes, how to make access into a letter writer. You can do it with or without Microsoft Word. Here's another very popular question. I want to build an access database for everyone in my company to use, but the boss doesn't want to fork over that much cash to buy copies of Microsoft Office for everyone, especially the warehouse guys who could use the database but don't need Excel, Word, and all that. Is there a cheap version of Access available? Well, the answer is no. There isn't a cheap version available, but there is a free version available. It's called the Runtime Edition. You use the Runtime Edition for people who only need to use the database and don't need to make design changes. So you have one copy of Access for the developer, you, right, the person who's building the database, and everybody else in the organization can get the runtime edition and it's absolutely free. Go watch that video. That'll explain how to get it, how to install it and how to use it. So if you got 20, 30 people in your office and you know, 10 people in the warehouse, they all have their own workstations. They need to be able to use the database to enter in products or whatever. All their copies are free. You just need to buy one copy of the full Microsoft office with access for your designer, for your developer. That's you. Okay. So that's a, that's a good question. What if a customer has multiple phone numbers, emails, or addresses? Okay. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in class, but generally as my rule of thumb, if they have two, maybe three of something, then it's okay to make multiple fields in the same table. All right. Home phone, work phone, cell phone. Not a problem. Shipping address, billing address. Not a problem. If it goes over three, then you really should consider making a second related table, which again, we're going to focus on relationships in Access Expert Level 1. Talk, talk about them a little bit more in Beginner 2, but we're going to give the full treatment in Access Expert Level 1. 
I've seen people build databases where they were doing orders, for example, and instead of having an order table and then an order details table for all of the line items, you know, the individual products on the order, they had 20 order item fields, right? Product one, product two, product three, product four. Don't do that. That's bad database design. You will learn out, you will learn why in those two videos there, Access Expert One and my relationships video. Okay, so yes, we will get to that. Relationships is a very, very important part of Access. It's also a little more advanced, so I, I cover it a little bit later on. So right now we're just focusing on basic database design, but keep that in mind, all right? If you got six of something, or like children, they might have zero children, they might have 10 children. You don't know how many children they're gonna have. You don't wanna reserve 10 fields, right? That goes in a separate related table. I've been using Excel for years. How can I import all of my Excel sheets into Access? Well, it's certainly easy to do, okay? But it can be difficult to do right, especially if your data isn't in your Excel sheets the right way. Like if you don't have all of your, your columns with the same kind of data. I've seen people do some really weird stuff with Excel sheets. So I give importing data from Excel the proper treatment in Access Expert Level 20. It's not hard to do. If everything works great the first time and all your data is nice and, and orderly, then yeah, that's easy. But when you have problems, <laughs> you could be pulling your hair out all night trying to figure out why it's not working. So we will get to that. I have three different classifications of customers, sales, service, and warranty only. How can I differentiate between them? Right now I have them in three separate Excel sheets. All right, one thing you don't want to do in Access is have three separate tables with the same type of stuff, okay? Customers are customers. They all have the same fields pretty much, for the most part. First name, last name, address, phone number, all that stuff, all right? You don't want to have three different tables with the same kind of stuff in them. What you'll do is you'll just put a field in that table to indicate what kind of customer this is. Is it a sales customer? Is it a service customer? Okay. Now the tricky part, the tricky part is if one customer can be in multiple classifications. So if someone can be a sales and service customer or a service and warranty only customer or all three, then you have to use something called a many to many relationship. It's a little more difficult. We will get to it in access expert level seven. I also have a tech help video called many to many. There you go. That's where you find that answer. Okay. Yes, it can be done. It takes a little work. Here's a big one. How can I keep people from changing the design of my forums, reports, tables, etc., and poking around in my database? Now, securing your database can take some, some work, okay? I have a whole seven hour course on just properly securing your database. It's called the Security Seminar. That's the first link there. It walks you through everything you need to know to properly lock down your database. We add user logons, all kinds of stuff, tracking what they do in the database with an audit log. Okay. Now that will keep pretty much the, the best hackers out of your database. However, if you just want some simple tips on keeping your average Joe office user from messing with the database, I've got that simple security video too. That'll give you, that'll give you enough information to keep the majority of regular normal office people out of your database. All right, we'll lock it down a little bit. Okay. But if you're worried about hackers in your office, I got the security seminar. So Access can be very secure or it can be not secure at all. It depends on how much effort you put into securing it. All right, so watch the simple security video first. And if you need really, really, really good security, go get the security seminar. This is a popular recent question in my forums, and I figured I'd include it here. With the COVID pandemic, lots of people are working from home. Is it possible to run access over the web? This is a tricky question to answer. There really isn't one easy answer. There is no web-based version of access. However, there are ways that you can run your database remotely over the internet. I do have a page on my website, some free videos that talk about how to run access online. So go to that page, watch what's there, read that page over. Um, whatever you do though, and I see a lot of people trying to do this, don't use Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, or any of those file sharing services there's a good chance you will corrupt your database. Lots of people try to run access with other people through Google Drive or Dropbox or whatever. Don't do that, okay? That's bad. So go, go watch that video, go, go read what's on that page, and you'll get all the information on this. And this changes often. There's always something new coming out, so, so keep checking that. Is there a way to make a menu system in access so I don't have to poke around in the navigation pane to find what I'm looking for? 
Yeah, yeah, we'll cover that in Access Beginner 7. I also show how to do that in my blank database template for Tech Help. And here it is right here in my blank database template, my Tech Help free template. You'll hear me refer to this a lot. Uh, it's basically a form with some labels and some buttons on it, right? You click a button, boom, there's your customer list, right? There's your customer form. There's your order form, okay? So we can use buttons and forms to make our menuing system. There is something called a navigation form. I don't like those, All right? And if you want to see why, there's another video you can go watch where I talk about navigation forms, okay? Or switchboards, they used to be called. All right, back in the old days, they were called switchboards, and they upgraded them to something called navigation forms, but I don't like either of those. I like to make my own menuing system. And finally, to round out the questions for Access Beginner 1, what do I have to do to back up my database? Well, there's a page right there, backup. Fortunately, everything you need, all your tables, forms, queries, reports, all that stuff is stored in one file. It ends in ACCDB. It's wherever you happen to store it when you created your database file. Back up that one file, and that's all you got to worry about. Everything is contained in there. Your forms, your queries, your data, everything you've typed in is all in that one file. Go watch my backup video for complete details. So that's it. That's the Q&A session for Access Beginner Level 1. These are the most popular questions that I've been asked over the last 20 or so years that I've been doing this. If you have questions, post them on my website. Right on the page that you find all these videos on, scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see where all the other questions and answers were posted. Feel free to post yours there. Thanks, and I hope you learned something today.